hello guys welcome to another interesting video well today's video is going to be a sequel for the previous video where i explained one of the graph traversal techniques which is breadth first search in this particular video we are going to look at another technique that we have which is depth first search now guys again this is an important topic and frequently asked by many companies so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video talking about the topics to be covered so again the similar topics we have dfs and its application first after this we have dfs algorithm with dry run then we have pseudo code after this we have complexity analysis and at last we have code implementation in c++ java and python right so without any further delay let's start with our first topic so i have the definition here it says that dfs is a graph traversal technique in which we start from any random node and then we keep exploring that particular node in depth right till we get a node with no neighbors after this we need to backtrack so let me explain i have one graph here and for this graph i am going to start uh, from the node 0 right so what i'll do is i'll keep track of the order as well so first i have the node 0 right then i'll go to one of the neighbors so there are three neighbors 1 2 and 6 so i'll start with 1 so from 0 I'll simply go to 1 then I'll write 1 here after this I'll go to the neighbor of this 1 so the neighbor of this 1 is 4 right so guys you can see that I'm exploring in depth and now I have got one node with no any neighbors right so at this time I need to backtrack so I'll simply go to this node 1 again then I'll go to uh, this node 0 after this I see that okay this 2 is not visited now right so this is another neighbor of 0 so I'll simply write 2 here then I'll go to 3 right so I'll write 3 here after this there is no any neighbor again right so I'll simply backtrack then I'll go to this 5 so I have 5 here then again no any neighbor so I'll go to this 2 again and then I'll go to this 7 right so I'll write 7 now guys every node of this neighbor 2 is also visited right so i'll simply backtrack from this 2 and i'll go to this 0 then i will go to this 6 because this is the last neighbor of 0 right so i'll simply go to this 6 now guys there is one neighbor of 6 which is 7 right but i'm not going to visit 7 again because i have already visited it right so this is how we can write the depth for search traversal of any graph right now i hope you have understood this so let's talk about the dfs application talking about the dfs application so again guys dfs can be used to solve multiple kind of problems and i have mentioned few of them the first one is pathfinding algorithms where we have uh, questions like rat in a maze problem and and queen problem etc right so rat in a maze is again a standard problem based on dfs technique right after this we have detect cycle in a graph algorithm so dfs works for both directed and undirected graphs after this we have topological sorting right then we have strongly connected components and at last we have web crawlers so web crawlers also make use of dfs algorithm in order to rank and find something in pages right i'm talking about web pages here so guys now i hope you have understood everything about dfs basics right so now let's talk about the dfs algorithm okay so i have one example here and i have written the definition of dfs as well guys we are going to use this particular definition in order to figure out how actually dfs algorithm works so see guys it says that we start from any random node and then we keep exploring that node in depth till we get a node with no neighbors right after this we need to backtrack so exploring a node in depth basically means that we start from a node then we go to a neighbor of that node and then we go to neighbor of that particular neighbor right so this is how we explore in depth let me explain with a given graph so i'll simply start with node 0 then i will go to one of the neighbors of this node 0 so I'll go to 1 right after this I'll go to neighbor of this neighbor so I'll go to this 4 you can see that how I'm moving in depth right what I want to do is guys I want to keep track of order as well while performing DFS so I started with node 0 after this I go to node 1 right and then we go to node 4 till now I have visited three nodes now you can see that this is a node with no any neighbors so at this time I need to backtrack I'll simply go to this particular node right and then I'll go to node 0 so you can see that now I'm done with every node of this particular neighbor which is one right after this i'll go to node 2 because node 2 is not visited till now and node 2 is a neighbor of node 0 right so i go to node 2 i'll simply write 2 in the order and then i will go to neighbor of this node 2 so again there are three neighbors 3 5 and 7 so i'll simply go to one of the neighbors let's say 3 so i'll go to 3 then 
you can see that this is a node with no any neighbor so i'll simply backtrack i'll go to this two after this i will go to this node five right so i'll ri simply write five in order then five is again a node with no any uh neighbors further right so i'll simply backtrack and then i will go to the last neighbor which i have which is seven right so i'll simply write seven in the order now again you can see that guys i'm done with this particular subgraph right which is a subgraph starting from node two so you can say that i'm done with this particular neighbor right which is node 2 now i will go to the last neighbor that i have which is 6 right so i'll simply process this 6 i'll simply write 6 in order and you can see that 6 has a neighbor 7 right but 7 is already visited so i can't go to 7 again so i'll simply say that okay i'm done with neighbor 6 as well right now guys there are some observations that we can uh, write from this particular explanation. The first observation is we have to keep track of visited nodes because you can see that if a neighbor is visited, then we are not going to visit it again, right? So this means that the first observation is keep track of visited, right? So I'll say that keep track of visited nodes. So this is the first observation that we have. Talking about the second observation, so guys, I want you to pay attention here because this is really important. You can see that I started with zero, right? So can I say that this is a function which is going to perform DFS from node zero, right? So I have to perform DFS from node zero. So how I perform? I have three neighbors. I have one, then I have two, then I have six, right? So for each neighbor, I start with a neighbor and then I explore every node of that particular neighbor, right? Starting from that neighbor itself. So can I say that this is nothing but DFS uh, from one? right because first i'm performing dfs for this particular subgraph and you can think of this subgraph as an individual graph for now you can ignore this particular graph so you can see that i'm performing dfs from one right and the nodes that i'll get is one four so this is dfs for this particular subgraph after this i'm performing dfs for this subgraph which is uh, the second neighbor of node zero right so this is node two i'm performing dfs for this particular subgraph so can i say that this is dfs of two right after this i'll perform dfs for last neighbor which is uh six right so i'll say that this is dfs of six so guys this gives us an idea that recursive approach is going to be used here let me show you how so i'll simply call a function which is dfs of i right this function is going to start dfs from node i so what i'll do is i'll simply explore every neighbor of that particular node for zero you can see that i explored every neighbor of node zero right and i call dfs for one by one so you can see that for each neighbor i'll simply write for each neighbor uh neighbor uh, i have to perform dfs so i'll simply say that dfs for that neighbor right so i'll simply write neighbor here this is how guys we can get the intuition for recursive approach so i can write my second observation as uh, we are going to use recursive approach so i'll simply write recursive approach right now i think the approach is clear to you like how the algorithm of dfs works right we have written a simple code as well but this is not the actual pseudo code so guys as a programmer we need to convert a particular algorithm into a pseudo code right so that we can write the implementation in any particular language so let's see how we can write the pseudo code for this particular algorithm okay so i have written a pseudo code here and you can see that we have a function which takes four parameters the first one is i i basically means that the node from which i am starting dfs right adj this adj basically means that we are talking about adjacency list i hope you guys are uh, familiar with adjacency list representation where we store the mapping of each node and its neighbors right so for this particular graph we have node zero first and the neighbors are one then two and then six right after this we have node one what are the neighbors of node one we have only one neighbor which is four then we have node two there are three neighbors again three five and seven right after this we have node three node three doesn't have any neighbor then node four no neighbors then node five no neighbors after this we have node six node six again have one neighbor which is seven then we have node seven with no any neighbors right so this is how adjacency list representation for this graph looks like right now guys there is one more parameter which is answer right so this answer is basically a list which is going to give me uh, the order of elements that i visit right after this i have this node which is the visited oh uh, okay i have this array right this is a visited array and this is going to keep track of visited elements so let me write this array this array has seven uh, like indices right i have zero one two three four five six seven right my bad it this array has 
eight indices, right? And these indices are going to store true or false based on whether the node is visited or what, right? This is the visited array and this is the answer. So let me write answer here and let me write visited here. Now guys, how I am starting? I'm initially starting from the node 0 right this is the function call I'm starting from node 0 then first I visit that particular node after this I add that node to the answer right so visiting node basically means that now visited of 0 contains true right after this I will add node 0 to the answer then I'll simply check out every neighbor of node 0 right so there are three neighbors I'll start with the first neighbor so if that particular neighbor is not visited which is true then I will call for that particular neighbor right so I'll call for the neighbor 1 then I'll simply say that okay now 1 is visited right so I'll make visited of 1 equals to true then I'll write 1 in the order after this uh, I'll check out every neighbor of node 1 right so I'll simply say that there is only one neighbor of node 1 even you can see here right and I'll simply uh, call the function 4 4 so I'll simply come inside the function then I will again visit the node 4 and after this I'll add 4 to the answer right then you can see that there is no any neighbor for node 4 so this loop is not going to call function anytime so it will simply return after this right so it is simply going to return then it will go to a uh, node 0 now you can see that we have not visited this node 2 yet right so I will now process the second neighbor which is 2 so I'll simply go to the function then I'll say that okay now 2 is visited right after this I'll write 2 in the order then I will check out every neighbor of node 2 there are three neighbors again you can see that and I'll call the function for neighbor 3 right so I'll say that now 3 is visited and then I'm going to call the function again I'll go inside the function and I'll visit node 3 first right and then I will write 3 here in the order as well after this there is no any neighbor for node 3 then I'll simply return so I'll go to here after this I will call the function for the next neighbor that we have which is 5 I'll go to 5 then I'll visit 5 and then I will write 5 here then you can see that there is again no any neighbor for node 5 so I will simply return then I will go to the last neighbor that we have which is 7 so I will call the function for 7 and I will come here then I will visit 7 first so I'll say that visited of 7 is now equals to true then I will add 7 to the answer after this 7 doesn't have any neighbor so I'm simply going to return then I will return again after this I'll go to the 0 right now you can see that I'm done with neighbor 1 and 2 and I'm last I'm uh, left with only one neighbor which is the last neighbor right which is 6 so I'll simply call the function for neighbor 6 I will visit 6 and then I will add 6 to the answer this is how we can perform DFS using this particular code guys right now I hope you have understood this particular pseudo code some questions that you may ask me the first question is this is a recursive code right you can see that I am calling the same function recursively but where is the base condition there is no any base condition right and whenever we have a recursive code then we should write the base condition so see guys here you can see that I keep track of visited nodes and the moment I don't get any node as not visited then I don't call this function so this particular condition is going to act as the base condition itself right so this is the answer for first question the second question that we have is what is the time complexity and space complexity of this code right so let's talk about the time complexity and space complexity and this is really interesting and tricky to understand guys first of all let me of this particular stuff okay so the first question that I want to ask you is for this particular graph for this particular graph what are the number of components or what are the number of elements that are forming this graph so I can divide this graph into two parts the first one is the nodes right nodes or vertices so let's say nodes or vertices how many nodes are there there are eight nodes starting from 0 to 7 right and the second component that form this graph is the edges right you can see that we have some connecting edges that be, uh, act as a path for uh, like path between two nodes right so we have some edges uh, let me write edges here and edges is basically represented with e right and there are eight edges for this graph now you can see that this graph is basically a combination of nodes and edges so if i traverse this graph then i'm going to pass through every node and edge isn't it so the total uh, nodes and edge that I'm going to traverse is V plus E, right? So the time complexity of this particular code is going to be O of V plus E. And even it makes sense because you can see that I'm calling the function for each node and each edge, right? Because why each edge? Because you can see that the moment I check each neighbor, then I'm 
doing nothing but checking every edge right because you can see that from any node we have some edges which are going to point to the neighbors right so this is how i am checking each edge and we are calling the function for each node right and this is about the time complexity what about the space complexity so the space complexity of this particular code is going to be o of v right the reason o of v because we are using some extra space in order to keep track of visited nodes and to store the answer right so this is how the space complexity is o of v now i hope everything related to dfs is clear to you first we talked about dfs and its application after this we talked about the algorithm right and then we talked about the pseudo code and time complexity now we are left with only one thing which is the code implementation right so let me show you the code I have the C++ code on the left hand side and then I have the Java code on the right hand side. After this I have the Python code as well, right? So let me start. So guys you can see that first I am making the answer list in order to store the answer. Answer is basically the order of elements that we have, right? After this we are making a boolean array and this array is basically going to keep track of the elements that we have visited, right? After this we are going to start from the node 0. Then we will simply return the answer, right? So how DFS is going to perform so you can see that this is the DFS function which is same as the one I have explained you in the pseudo code, right? Again, you can see that similar code is written in C++ as well. Now guys, there is one more thing that I want to mention. This is the Python code. There is one more thing that I want to mention. That particular thing is disconnected graph. How we handle disconnected graph? First of all, let me remove this. So guys, what are disconnected graphs? So you can see that there are links between every edge here, right? So let's say we have a graph, uh, we have this particular graph right we have one two three and four and then we have five here right so you can see that there is a connection between every node but there is no any connection between this part and this part right so you can see that we can have a graph like this right so in these type of graphs we have to uh, perform dfs in a different way see if i perform dfs starting from one then you can see that i'll visit one then i'll visit two then i'll visit 3 and 5 right and I'll simply print 1 2 then 3 and 5 right but till now we have not traversed the node 4 and we are not going to traverse the node 4 because there is no any link between node 4 and node 1 right so we have to handle this case in order to handle cases like these what we do is we simply call the DFS in a loop so for now you can see that I'm calling DFS for node 0 but I will call the DFS for every node so I'll say that okay for i equals to 0 then i smaller than v then i plus plus right and I'll simply say that okay call DFS for i so this is how we handle the disconnected graphs guys right now I hope you have understood the concept of disconnected graphs as well so this is all about this video if you like the explanation then you can hit the like button thank you